doing, Keith? It's been a long, long um, time. It really has been. I, you know, we go all the way back to the action film camp that I first met you. We were producing it with Keith Strandberg and Michael DePasquale. And it was the first time that I was aware who you were. We were, we started this camp to find fighters and train them for our films. And I put, I've said this on many of my own interviews, my podcast, get this. You came in and you started performing. And I looked over at Keith Strandberg and I said, I have two sensations right now. I am overjoyed. I have just witnessed the greatest martial artist I've ever seen. Okay. My second sensation was I was depressed. I had just wit witnessed the greatest martial artist I had ever seen. And I knew I could never do anything he just did. And I looked at Keith and I went, that's not even possible what he's doing. You know, so congratulations for on your career and everything you've done. But you were just a, phen a phenomenal martial arts athlete that that just took this industry by surprise. Oh, thanks, Keith. Thanks for those kind words. That's too much. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, God, I learned such a lot on that on that seminar. That was the first time I'd been to America. Um, I don't I can't remember how I heard about it, but we used to have the martial arts mags in those days, right? It's probably in there somewhere. And I remember, you know, because my parents, they didn't have a lot of money. And I mentioned it to my mom and dad. I'd love to go and take, you know, be in this seminar because I loved all the no treats, no surrenders and the seasonal stuff. Um, and my uncle had some air miles left that he needed to get rid of. So he said, I'll give you the air miles and you can get the, the plane to Atlanta. And my mom was crying when I got on the plane because I think she could tell that I was a bit nervous. I'd never been on a flight that long before. But I desperately wanted to achieve this dream I had, you know. And I thought, what better place to go and do it? I remember the towel drills and everything where we were kicking right. the towels and then he had to react. I remember a guy saying, uh, I don't know which of you it was, but act, react like you're being burnt with a hot iron. And, and that made perfect sense to a body shot, you know. Well, Keith Sturberg and I started producing films where he was producing it first before I joined him, but I was one of the actors. But we found that the local people you would pick up, the martial arts fighters, you put them in the films, they had a hard time with reactions. And yeah. so it was just frustrating trying to train them on the set, you know, wasting all that time. And it, it was just difficult. Mm -hmm. So we figured out a way. We said, let's let's start an action film camp and market it, bring people in. And we'd have 100 people come in usually to these camps and we just go through the training. And then we would kind of cherry pick the ones we wanted for films. And we probably put 100 different people in films, you know, in, in the industry. I, I really learned a lot. Um, I mean, my first job was a Hong Kong movie where I... I really learned a lot there as well. Baptism by fire, but yeah, picked up so much off you guys. And I remember Strandberg, he wanted to put me in blood moon. Um, right. but I remember he, they used so much of the visas on the Hong Kong crew that he wasn't able to get me over in the end. It was frustrating for us because we thought we had found Bruce Lee, Chuck, it, all of them rolled into one. And we were so excited about you. And it was the first movie I co-produced with Keith Strandberg. I found the studio and we got, uh, uh, of course, Gary Daniels, just yeah. a wonderful martial artist and, and the late Darren Shabali. Yeah, Darren who, was great. And, and get this, I was going, there's something in the water in the UK because all three of you guys could do things that most of the actors, martial artists in the States couldn't do. And I just kept on going, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. But, but Gary was just, a, he still is a good friend of mine and I really yeah. enjoyed working with him. A guy, he could just do anything. He's, I know you guys are friends as well. Yeah, yeah, no, fantastic. Um, you know, I think what it is about the UK, I'm not sure if this is necessarily true, but I think I was told once that back in the 90s, early 90s, we had more access to Hong Kong movies than Americans did. That's what I was right. told once, and it kind of made sense. Um, so we, there's a whole generation around my age that grew up watching the Jackie Chan movies and, and all those Hong Kong martial arts films that got very inspired I think maybe they came a bit later to America or they were harder to get. Right. Exactly. And there were the American style films, the Don Wilson, our Camacho type of fight. You know, there's so many of those totally different than the experiences I had doing the Hong Kong films with Jackie Chan and those type with Tony Leung with seasonal films. It was a whole different world. So I'd go from one world like uh, Revenge of the Ninja doing, you know, movies with Shokasugi 
and nothing like uh, experiences I'd have with the other films. Now we're going to do something so different today different. because you are interviewing me for your podcast, which I'm I'm very grateful to be on. Um, so you're going to be asking me a, a lot a lot of questions. Tell me about Wheels on Meals then. What was that experience like of filming a fully fledged Hong Kong martial arts film? One of the best we've ever seen and working was, with the great Yun Biao. How was it for you then to film fighting in, in Hong Kong or the Hong Kong style for the first time? Right. It, it was difficult at first, but I was coming off. I was an athlete and I was competing. So yeah. I was in great shape and I was known as a kicker. And what most people don't realize is that Benny and I went to Barcelona together to work with Samo and Yong Val and, and uh, Jackie. Did you know Benny before first, that? Yes, I did a film with Benny uh, called Force Five. And I was just, I was supposed to be one of the actors in that, but I screwed up on my audition that Robert Klaus looked at me and says, ah, oh, you're just a stunt guy. So I didn't even get this, one of the starring roles, but Benny did. And uh, so I was part of that. It was my first fight scene against my mentor, Richard Norton. And so I've done some films with Richard Norton. So I was just blessed to do that first fight scene with him. And that, But it was a good experience, but Wills on Mills, was so good. We had a lot of training. We would put it together, but nothing, nothing like you, we do now where you rehearse, it'd be on the set. And get this, the first time I was uh, doing my first fight, fight scene with Jackie Chan, it's like one-on-one -on -one stunt fighting teaching. Jackie comes to me and he goes, I said, Jackie, we're getting ready to shoot. Robert Chow's, uh, Raymond Chow's there. And there's all the actors, there's a hundred people on set. We're gonna do a big scene. And I looked at Jackie, I said, Jackie, we haven't rehearsed the scene yet. He goes, and he sat down and he goes, throw some kicks for me. So I jumped up and I did a bunch of kicks and spuns and I'm a pretty good kicker. And he literally stood there like this and he goes, on his leg, he goes. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm watching, I'm, I'm working out the beat, the rhythm of the fight. I said, what are you talking about the rhythm? He says, you can take the two best fighters in the world you put them together, if there's not a beat, a rhythm, your subconscious mind will not like that fight. He says, but what we're going to do is we're going to put something rhythmical together. And then that's what he did. And I was like, I'm like a kid in a candy store going, oh, my goodness, this is pretty good training from the master himself. Yeah, because it helps if you know the rhythm of the fight, right? Because for people that don't know, like you, you, you don't want to get hit in the face for real when you're doing a fight scene, although sometimes it does happen. That's part and parcel of it. But you find that when you know the rhythm with your partner, like you're dancing, you know what the choreography, you know when the, the technique is coming because it's based on the rhythm. So you can like stay in the pocket a bit more and, and stay within the, de the danger zone a bit more because if you're both within the rhythm, you know, you, you know when to move and when not to. People didn't realize at the time, I was witnessing the end fight scene for Wheels on Mills with Benny and Jackie Chan. And we would- One of the greatest fight film. scenes ever made. So I'm I'm doing my end fight scene with Young Bao down at the bottom of the castle. And then we'd finish shooting and then do, and then we'd go up to watch Benny's. And believe it or not, Young Bao, he was old school traditionalist. He liked long legs. He liked long spinning moves. And every time Benny, they were putting the fight sequences together right there. And they would rehearse it. And, and he would tap me and go, don't like, don't like. I said, what don't you like? He goes, too close, too short. He didn't like Benny's short legs. And, but now after I'm watching it, I went, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. There was no music, no editing. no. And I went, I'm just witnessed in person without any special effects, the best fight scene I've ever seen. It was remarkable, just remarkable. And Benny took a lot of, a lot of punishment because Jackie was just sticking them. I mean, literally, they do the close-ups, you know, and they, they put the yeah. powder on, they split you, then they just smack you. And, and they, they set us up. Well, and, so what Benny was like, yeah, just hit me. I'm, I'm hard. I can take it. Give me your best shot. Yeah. And it didn't matter because Samuel Hung told him. And Samuel goes, you know, he go, Benny, you okay? And Benny started it himself because Benny, they were doing close-ups. And Benny's would have, he, I just did a fight scene with Benny a couple months ago. And so I know Benny really well. So Benny is the toughest man alive. I don't think he feels pain. I used to fight him. I'd hit him with the hardest techniques and he wouldn't even budge. I go, but anyway, Jackie would hit a close up and he would stick him three, four hard close up techniques during that fight. And then cut and Samuel will go, Benny, okay? And Benny go, no problem. 
Well, he kept on saying, no problem, which was ticking off Jackie and Jackie's entourage. Because then Jackie would look over at his people, and then Benny would just look over at me and smile, and then, okay, let's do it again. And then again, one, two, three, and then he'd stick him harder. And then he'd go, Benny, okay. And Benny look at Jackie, and then look at him and go, no problem. <laughs> and I went, oh my gosh. And yeah, then they were quite competitive vicious. with each other, weren't they? I've heard all the stories about how uh, Jackie kept saying, yeah. oh, I'm going to fight you at the end of this movie. And then by the time yeah, they'd I... done the fight, he was like, no, no, I'm not going to fight you. I I got along with with Samo was powerful like a bear. Jackie was his versatile, would do all kind of wild stuff, but Young Bao was pure excellence. It was like yeah. he was just the perfect machine. Oh, he and was I, the I cleanest really kicker. He he was the cleanest kicker and acrobat of the three, really, wasn't he? Oh yeah. 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 And they would tell me stories about when they were in that Peking opera together when they were children. So it was nice to sit around at dinner and they just tell the stories. And there was a hierarchy that Samo was the big brother, and then there was yeah. Jackie, and then there's Young Bao. And Young Bao couldn't say much. I go, why not? And he goes, they're my big brothers. I, I have to do what they tell me to do, which was so odd to me from our culture. Yeah. And then Jackie and Samo stayed and they'd always just go at it. And there was one scene working with Jackie where Samo, they were they were betting and they were having some difficulty, but you could tell we got to the set, there's a hundred and something people there. There was a bus of Japanese that had been unloaded to watch this scene in the courtyard. And Raymond Chow came in, flew in to see the scene. And Benny and I were fighting Jackie and uh, Samo had everything set up. And so Samo goes, everybody ready? And we choreographed our techniques. And Samo says, when Jack, when Benny does this, I want you to slide up and hit Jackie Chan with a sidekick and take him out. And I went, that's what I do. That's the name of my, my podcast, Sidekick. I'm known for my sidekick. So I got right side forward and, Jack, and Samuel behind the camera goes, what are you doing? And I went, I'm, I'm ready. He goes, oh no, change sides. And I went, oh. oh no, you don't want me to change sides. I could throw a sidekick, but I'm going to hurt somebody with it. He goes, no problem. I'll change everything just for you. And I went, no, no, sorry, sorry. You know, so I changed. I got back to my right side, my left side forward. And we did the technique and I slid up my side and I can't control my sidekick, my left side. It's just my right side, I can do anything with it. Just push you, hit yeah. you, snap. Left side, I just, I blast you. So I hit yeah. him, he goes down and he's screaming on the ground. He's in pain. And as he's on pain, like, cause he can't wear chest protector. His entire entourage gets around him. Raymond Chow runs to him. He's doing this to me. And I go, I think I'm fired. I'm pretty sure I'm fired. So I look like this. I'm really, I don't know. I know I messed up. Samuel looks over and he goes, Kei Fu. And I go, yes. He goes, more power. I'm like, more power? I just hit him hard. He says, more power. What I didn't know was, I think he meant more speed, but I thought he said more power. So here I go again. <laughs> I kept on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Six, seven times each time he went down in pain, screaming. I mean, he was just miserable pain. So he's on the ground. And then uh, finally, my last one, I caught him in the throat. And when I caught oh, him in the throat, yeah. I broke character because I knew I crushed him. He lays on the ground and then they so get all that the mad because that's the take they wanted to use. Well, still, that's the take they did put in. Okay. But Samuel, I knew he was going to fire me, but instead he says, I've got something for you. I want to create a new scene for you. I want you to sidekick one of my, my people into a, like a bus. Can you can you hit him so hard he makes the bus shake? I said, yeah, I'll try it. I mean, so he was, <laughs> Samuel was just a bear. He didn't care. You know, when I fought oh, him, hit him as hard as you it's want. It's tough on those movies, yeah. They don't take any prisoners, yeah. 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 yeah it's no, it's he, hard work, isn't it? But But literally, literally. We had one, he's spinning the weapons, I'm fighting Yong Bao, I'm fighting him, and I got to do jump kicks and spin kicks and round kicks and dunk weapons, and I do a jump spinning kick, and I'm supposed to break his staff, and then he looks, and then I jump kick him and knock him out. Well, one of the takes, I was so exhausted, because I'm doing this as powerful as I can each time, I went too deep and I caught him in the head, and when I hit him in the head, he went out unconscious. Young Bao this did was Young Bao. I did. 
No, I, you'll be next to me. No, hit Jack, hit Samuel Hung. Oh, Samuel. Samuel Hung. Oh. I knocked him out. And it li literally 60 seconds. I didn't break character and neither did Young Bill. We just stood there. And then finally he wakes up. He goes, good, good. And he was so <laughs> excited. He picked me up and he oh. got me in a bear hug. He said, that's what I want. And I went, oh my gosh. This yeah, is hardcore. Oh, this, is, this is a hard boy. I'm not even making this up. I asked you, on, you and I said, how are you going to kill me at the end of the film? There's no scripts. There's no rehearsal. There's none of that. You know, it's just free. Come to the set and let's shoot. And uh, so he goes, he says, nobody can believe we can beat you, Keith. And I went, what? I said, I'm, this doesn't even make sense. But I went, I think you're right. So you don't have to kill me. He goes, no, we're going to figure a different way to kill you off at the end. And then Samuel came out at the end and he had this, this tr tray and he had this ceramic jugs and he had six or eight of them on there. And the whole crew came out. The whole crew came out to see me get mine because I've been smacking people. Jackie and Sambo, they said, they're going to get me back. A couple of scenes I hurt, I hit too hard in round kicks to get you on a couple of times in round kicks as well. So I know they're going to pay me back and, I, and it was warranted. So Samuel goes, Keith, he says, we're going to do this scene one time. He says, and he's going to crash you over the head. You don't do it right. We're going to use all six of these jugs. And I said, <laughs> okay. I said, can I see them? And he had them right there. And I kind of hit the jug like that. And I said, but they're ceramic. They're not breakaways. And he says, Real. what do you want? I said, no, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And they had wine in them. And uh, so when we did the scene, he hits me at the end of the fight scene. He hits me over the head. I knew it's coming. I was doing this. Uh, yeah! And I remember there's a smile on my face as I drop because I'm thinking I'm the dumbest person in the world to let them <laughs> knock me out, but they knocked me out. I woke up and they were all clapping. The whole crew was clapping. <laughs> did it knock you out then? It's totally out. That oh, thing. Man, and I only yeah. did one take. That It was only one take for all of that. The good old days, eh, Keith? <laughs> the good old days <laughs> when it was for real proper hardcore. That's why we still love those movies now. They were hardcore. Right, right. It's your, can you just tell us that your martial arts background? I know you're a professional um, kickboxer, right? Or sport karate fighter. Well, I, I did that as well, but I started with a track background in, when I went to school, college. So I was a distance runner. So I went straight from distance runner to taking taekwondo. And then from taekwondo to different styles, and I studied with different people. And then I did what they call tournament fighting karate. And then I would tour the country and yeah. the world and I, I'd compete. And that's where I excelled. And at the same time, I was fighting full contact in, at the same time. So my first star in role was one that got a theatrical release all over the world for the first time. Only one movie had ever done that. And that was Enter the Dragon. And then mm. our movie was second. GMC picked it up. And I had two premieres back then. But we were in every theater in the United States, all over the world. And this is my first film. And so that revenge put me on the map instantly with that Shoka Sugi yeah. movie. And yeah. that, the difference is when I saw that movie, when I was making it, I thought it was awful. I, the scenes were so over the top and awful. When I did the Wheels on Mills movie, every scene I thought it was the best thing I had ever seen. You know, that's the difference yeah. between American and the Hong Kong style in my mind. I went, oh my gosh. Little did I know, the Revenge of the Ninja became one of the biggest movies of all time, and it just became yeah. a phenomenal hit. You inspired me so much as a kid. The films that I w watched you in, I loved um, No Treat No Surrender Three, Blood Brothers, so much. I've seen that oh, film so many times. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was great. <laughs> I've watched that yeah. film so many times. That end fight, going up the the, the whatever you call it, the scaffolding and everything. That must yeah, have took yeah. a long time. It, that yeah. did take a week, and that did take 10, 12 hours a day, and that was brutal, you know, because it's in the summer, it's hot, you can't have the air conditioning running, and it's just, it's it's so hard. Tony Leung was a phenomenal stunt uh, coordinator. I, I wasn't a big fan of um, Lucas Lowe, the director, He, but he didn't have yeah. much to do with that. He just let Tony 
uh, do most of what he wanted to do. And Tony was, he was really good, but he was demanding, just demanding. And there was things like, he'd go, I'm so limited. You guys are so talented. He'd go, Keith, you're going to do a kip up with your gun. And you're going to, I went, what's a kip up? He goes, <laughs> kip up, you jump up. And I went, I had a cast on because I broke my arm and I had a gun in this hand. And he goes, you just lay on the ground, you pop up. And I went, can you show me? He goes, stop. And they told his crew, it says, teach Keith how to do it. You got five minutes to learn. Five minutes wow. later, let's go, let's roll. And I jumped up and I had the gun and I shot. It was the first time I've ever did it. It was right there when he taught me how to do it. Because you got the gun and you got the cast. You can't use your hands really. So it's all neck. I had to use the back of my neck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you did well to much. learn that in one day because, because a lot of wish you guys are training from age six to do that. Oh, well, no. I learned that in five minutes. And I yeah. am not talented like you guys. Oh, no, no. There's, there's, <laughs> It's like, oh my goodness. And so I just did it. But it was fun working with Lauren Avedon. It was a little frustrating working. I, I like Ryan Hunter at the end, not during the process, was fine. He's one of those actor actors. He came in in character. You know, so I, I don't care. I just do films. I'm nice to everybody. And I put my hand to shake his hand and, and he goes, I don't like you. And I went, what do you mean you don't like me? He says, I'm the bad guy. I don't like you during the film. And I went, it's called acting. I, Let, let's hope matter. you like me during so, the fight scene because we don't, we don't want to actually be smashing the hell out of each other more than we need to. And then after the fight came out, after the film came out, my son kept up to me. He goes, Dad, you are terrible. I said, why? He goes, you and the alarm guy took two of you to beat an old man up with white hair. And I went, it's in the script. And I get mad at Keith Sternberg. And Keith goes, I know. You're thinking of yourself, not the storyline. I went, but we couldn't beat an old man up. I mean, I don't only speak for myself, but that's what I loved about those movies because they were directed by Hong Kong directors and action directed by Hong Kong directors it just had a completely different feel to, to them you know there were american oh, yes. movies but the fights were you know they were cheesy there was sometimes you were laughing at the wrong things but the fights the action was so incredible right, that right. you know and, and all the other movies that were coming out at the time couldn't compete they're on an, another level yeah! What, what was it originally called? It wasn't called No Treat, No Surrender 3, right? It was just called Blood Brothers. No, I think the shirts we were wearing on the set were called Blood Brothers. And it was later that it turned into No Retreat, No Surrender 3 because usually when Lauren and I are talking about it, we always talk about we starred in Blood Brothers. And uh, it's just one of those films that go went all through Europe and they probably had 20 different names to them. And uh, yeah. But I think it's the one that a lot of people saw... I, I did a film recently, and there was this uh, German uh, stunt director, coordinator named Mike Moeller, and he's really good, and he's doing a lot of films now, and he said he grew up on these films. You know, he was behind the Iron Curtain. When they when they got a chance to get these films, these are the films they would watch and learn about fighting in a whole bit, so it was so, it was really nice to hear that, and uh, yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed the scene because I thought Tony Leung, the fight coordinator, was just so talented. And he has a team of eight people and they're off in the corner and they got their VHS and they're in their recorders and they're looking at all these different old movies. And then they're creating new fight sequences right there. They walk over to us and then they go, here's your next four, six, eight moves. And they just create it right there. So we don't have any rehearsal yeah. time at all. Hong Kong and they style, come over yeah, and they the go, spot. it's all Hong Kong. And they go, these are your eight moves. And we go through it once. I go through it twice. Ready? All right, let's shoot. And then you do it. And sometimes Keith Strindberg said, I did one scene 56 times. I don't remember, but I know with Jackie Chan's film, with Samo, I did one 50, over 50 times. Listen, I, I find it very hard doing these fight scenes. It's, it's painful. I don't particularly enjoy it. But when you go to that monitor and they go, yeah, yeah, and you, you watch it and it works, it makes it all worthwhile. And then you've got to go back to doing a load of takes to get the next shot. It's miserable. But it's all worthwhile when you see the whole fight scene cut together, right? Right. We did one of the fight scenes was in the car garage. And Lauren and I are in there, and I'm coming to save him or whatever. And then they come out of everywhere, bad guys. And it was a real fun scene to do. Uh, a lot of spin, jump moves, going through car windows, and, and typical Hong Kong style. And uh, no, it was good. I, I love that. The dialogue part, I didn't have the confidence you know, I wasn't an actor. I, I, I took acting classes, but it didn't matter. But I but I felt confident as soon as the actors directors say action, I loved it. I, I was just in yeah. my element. 
you know, but. So you produced Blood Moon. Um, did you produce Super Fights? I did. I produced that one with Keith, and I did Blood Moon. What about American Shaolin? I did. Uh, no, I, I I didn't do that one at all. I was doing. I did a movie called American Kickboxer One, and I did that in uh, South Africa with John Barrett. And was that so did, after No Treat No Surrender Three? Uh, yes, it was after. All oh, right, okay. Right. Yeah, I remember that yeah. one. I just remember I choreographed that. I, I didn't start as the fight choreographer, but two weeks into the shoot, um, the owner called me. I'm like, Keith, can you can you choreograph the fight scenes? I could because it was in a ring and everything with boxing rings. I could choreograph, but I couldn't do what you did in Accident Man because I never performed katas or forms in tournaments. So my mind wasn't geared that way, putting together. I could just fight. I was a fighter. And... Uh, I'd hang out with Mike Stone, Chuck Norris, uh, Joe, all of those guys in the old days. Those were my inspirations. I'd hang out with them and, and train and fight. But it was harder for me because I didn't know how to project my emotions like actors do. Because when they get on film, they realize you're, you're telling the story through your face. And Jackie Chan would come to me and open my eyes and, and go, no, no, more more face, more more face. You know, because... <laughs> I thought I could do it, but as soon as the act, as soon as the director would go, all right, ready, point on set, action, and I, I go right back to my ring again. Go back to fight mode, ring, yeah, yeah. You're hiding you're your emotions. Hiding, you don't project. Yeah. yeah, you don't. Somebody hits you, you don't go. Ah. Whereas I yeah. hit Jackie, Jackie would just explode. You know, and fall on yeah. the ground sometimes crying. And I go, and Benny looks at me, goes, "There's no crying in karate." And I go, "But he is." You know, it's just, but he's. Yeah, well, you, he's you'd have to express. break a, a lifetime of of habits from. Hiding, you know, your punches, hiding your emotions. Um, you, you have to completely change your mindset, don't you? Um, but I always, for me, I was training in martial arts, you know, the reality-based side of it, but always with the mind to, I want to get into the films as well. So I was always thinking that I, I would make my own home movies with my friends doing fight scenes. So, you know, always doing it from a, a young age. Now, I know, like the accident, man, you did a lot of the the duties from producing to writing the storyline and then starring in it. It takes so much effort. Just when I produced a film and starred in it, I couldn't even, I was just worn out. I couldn't imagine putting the fight sequence together. Have you ever thought about directing it as well? Yes. Uh, trying to make it happen. I won't say Good. any more than that. I've got, a, I've got the, the project. Just trying to make sure that everything is going to be... Um, you know, I, I don't want to blow it. I want it, I want it to be good. Everything has to be right. Otherwise, why am I going to do it? I want to, I, I want to give myself a, a second career almost, you know, as we, as we get older, I probably can't smash myself around as much as I, I'll try my best, but be like, I'd like to have something else to do as well as I'm advancing in years. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, not yet, but I'm thinking in the future, 20 years ahead. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure everything's right. Uh, and in terms of getting tired, like d doing this, the writing and the, the producing, the only reason I do it is so that I can have creative control of my films. And I'm not at the mercy of waiting for the, the script because inevitably what happens, you can be waiting for a, a good script to come around and maybe six months later, you're still waiting and you end up taking something really crap just because you got to get paid and put food on the table, you know, so... I'm actively creating my own projects and writing stuff these days okay, and producing for that reason so that they can be good. I want them to be good. I don't want to do bad movies. I want to do good movies. Well, your movies are very good. The general consensus of everybody I've interviewed so far, and I've interviewed the very best of the best, all these great guys from Richard Norton and Cynthia Rothrock and all of them, Lauren Avedonk, the consensus is you're the best we've ever seen. Everybody starts off thinking, <laughs> who's your favorite? They all point to you. You know, and they always go back, well, it started with Bruce Lee, but now it's you. And, you know, so you should really be proud of your career and everything you've done because you are, you're leading the next generation of martial artists, which is something to really be proud of. Oh, thanks, Keith. I really appreciate that. It's hard to take on board. Um, but you, you inspired me greatly. I want you to know that, like, truthfully, especially that experience, you know, seeing you in the movies, but that experience uh, in Atlanta, learning screen fighting from you guys yeah it really helped um so you've you've helped me get here my friend so i just wanted to well, know that listen, 
We're standing on the shoulders of giants anyway. Oh, my. You, and I know that I've seen so much of your stuff, but I just want the audience to know that how early did you think about getting into films? I know that you're, you have a vast variety of styles that you study, but when did it's you first get thing I remember. To, I want to be a star? It's the first <laughs> thing I remember. I remember telling my parents I wanted to be a stuntman. And then that became, I want to be an action star. I remember watching Bloodsport and being like, I was already massively into Bruce Lee. Jackie Chan, those films hadn't come out yet, which contradicts what I said earlier about Hong Kong movies coming out before America, but they came out kind of after Van Damme. A stream of Hong Kong movies started coming out then. But when I saw Bloodsport, I vividly remember saying to my mom, I want to do what that guy does. And that, that I made my mind up for sure then. I, I wanted to be like a an action martial arts guy. And I dreamt the dream for as long as I can remember and used to go down the bottom of the garden and pray to God, please, <laughs> please, I have to be part of this. Please, can you just let me be part of this? And uh, I think if you visualize something so clearly and work so hard to get there, you can't be de denied, right? But I didn't know. I was scared that it wasn't going to work out for me, but I always had that dream. Well, the good thing that I think that you did, that you incorporated gymnastics, and most people don't, and that gave you an edge and gave you another dimension in your fights. And um, when you've got the role for Boyka, for the Undisputed, it, it I think it changed your career. I think that's probably what catapulted you into stardom was that world itself or, or was it before then no i'd say it's boyka but it, it wasn't it didn't happen overnight uh that film became a, a cult favorite and then by the time we did three and we did another one of course um eventually but you have to remember i don't look like boyka so i wouldn't walk around being recognized i mean i remember being with michael jai white he came to london and we went to a martial arts show and people were stopping him and they're all saying, oh, Undisputed 2, man. Undisputed 2 is brilliant. I'm standing right next to him and he's like, you do know who this is, right? And they're like, no, this is Boyka. But nobody ever recognized me because I look so drastically different. Um, but yeah, meeting Isaac Florentine uh -huh. and doing Special Forces, the film before that. And then he really fought for me to have that role as Boyka. Uh, he had to fight the producers to, to 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 make it so that I was playing that part, and so I owe a lot to Isaac. How much weight did you put on for that? How do you muscle up, and how much weight? Um, I had a good lead in. I had quite a bit of time, so it was about I don't know four months of just eating as much as I could and training hard. I mean, yeah, I was in good shape before that, but I I went to the next level with it. I mean, you got to because Michael Jai White's so huge. How was it going? I just felt like how am I going to play a convincing villain? against his hero i've got to you know i've got to go for it um so i put a lot of muscle on we use kilograms over here not the pounds but oh, normally see, i'm about 84 yeah i'm about 84 right. 86 kilograms and i went up to 90 kilograms for undisputed too wow. i was carrying around a bit of fat and water to be honest i was more ripped in the third one but looked bigger for it in a way well i malcolm j white's a personal friend of mine i was just with him a couple of months ago and he's a terrific athlete. I think together you two just were a dynamic couple, you know, in, in your fight scenes. And what got me was, was, was it two, wasn't that the one that you fought him that you really had JJ Perry come aboard and then kind of work some of your moves and your, I, you yeah, did JJ, three things. JJ was the, the fight coordinator. And he, the, the speed ramping was something that he suggested. He'd been watching this Robbie Williams video where they're using the speed changes like that. And he brought that to that movie, which Isaac then used in every other subsequent film. And Mike was like helping me out a lot, trying to make himself, like, he was bringing his weight down as I was trying to bring mine up. He was, you know, putting me up on a box so because he wanted to look the same height. Um, he well, wasn't doing martial arts and that was frustrating him. I knew he wanted to start throwing some kicks because he was seeing me have all the fun. Well, he's the real deal. He is bona fide, yes, yeah. just one of the baddest men. But he was playing a boxer, you see, so he couldn't do much kicking. I could see he was getting frustrated, like, man, I want to do some kicks. <laughs> There's a kick where I, I run up somebody's chest and I do a, they call it a flash kick, you know, and I land and I do a somersault. 
and I didn't know that I could do that. I'd, I'd, I'd pushed off somebody's chest before, and then I would land on the ground, and then I would sidekick them. That was on my show reel for a long time. But right. JJ's like, do you reckon he could run up his chest and, and flash kick him? I said, oh, I don't know. Go on, try it. So he, he would push me, and he would elevate. In Wolverine, we came up with this move where I'd sidekick one guy, and then I'd do a full 360 spin horizontal like a butterfly twist off, off the guy and then kick somebody else. And so he would push me to do things that I didn't know I could do. And that's what you need from a, a fight coordinator. Now I'm like, no, no, I don't want to get injured. Let's stick to what I could do. <laughs> For me, the next phase of your career, and I, everybody has their opinions, when you did an Benjamin. See, most martial artists and film stars, I don't know of any of them that would have done what you did. You have no ego. You care so much for the film. You put a grill in your mouth. You shaved your head. You came out of... It was just the ugliest looking meme. And I went... And it was some of the best action, best acting from you. And I went, this this took you to another level because I'm 90% hair. 10% substance. If I don't have my hair, I'm, I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love I love playing a, I love playing a character. I actually prefer it when because um, you know if you're the the good looking hero or you're supposed to be. Sometimes you wake up and you look in the mirror and you think, oh my god, I look rough today. Uh, it, it is it's another thing to worry about. But if you're playing a part where none of that matters, it's a lot more freeing. So I always like to try and create a character and have a lot of fun doing that because I started acting you know age 18 um you know start started young and i was on the stage and everything doing shakespeare and all sorts so even though i wasn't as good as an actor as i was a martial artist like martial arts came naturally to me the acting took a bit of work but i always you know really appreciate uh getting to play a character well I, i'd say here's the difference in you and i when i first started i was more concerned about my stance Samuel Hung is going, getting ready to say action. I'm going, what's my style? What's my, I didn't even know. I had no sense of who I was. Do I get low? Do I? I know what you're matters. saying. None but of I, know, I know where you're coming from, Keith. <laughs> I used to think the same thing. I used to think, I don't know that I know what my style is. And then I realized that my style is no style. I'm just hard. I'll just play it like I don't care. Hands down. Wait for the kick and then I, back, react to it. You know, rather than think, I, I used to, to think, well, what's my pose? Shall I do a Wu Shu one? Shall I make it Chinese? Right. Shall I do something? I, d I can't do what Van Damme does because everyone's doing that. What is my style? I used to think this. You know, most people are thinking that I'm much more intelligent than that. No, that's all. I, that's where it was. It, it was <laughs> when he says action to what, you know, and then I figured out, I wish I had just stood there and looked menacing if I could look menacing, you know, versus doing the, you know, little hokey pokey, whatever I did. But I, I didn't yeah. care, but here's my favorite of all your films. John Wick, of course, blew me away. You in that suit, you your role wasn't as long, but you technically, that's all people talked about from that film. The fact that you could do what you did in that film was just, it's, it's incredible. And a lot of films I've enjoyed, they're all great, but when you did Accident Man, and mm -hmm. the first with Amy Johnson and Michael J. White again, and that was good, but here, you did you figured out a secret to filmmaking that most people haven't figured out. You did the second one. And it's so good because you put depth with your characters. Your characters were so rich. They had a history, but you gave them a history because you did a voiceover. You introduced the characters on film. So now we can identify with the characters, good or bad, it doesn't matter, but we know who they are. And they were deep and rich. And then they were just so fantastic and just made the film so fun to watch. And then this Andy Long came on. I stood up and I was doing this going, who yeah. who can do what that man just did? Oh my goodness. Yeah, the next, so the next congratulations generation. Congratulations on that film. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, it was a project, it was a comic book that I loved as a kid, so it was very dear to me. I managed to get the rights and produce it. And I wrote it with my friend from school, Stu Small. And we've wrote quite a few things together now, Avengement included. You but... produced that and you also <laughs> choreographed that film. Yeah, well, listen, I learned that ignorance is bliss. I didn't want to know what I knew was going on behind the scenes because it's so stressful. I don't like to do it. I'm more of a creative pr producer than a producer-producer. I can't crunch the numbers okay. like those guys do, and I don't want it because I'm too 
like emotionally involved. You've got to be like hard and cold with it and just cutthroat to be a good producer. I just want to spend all, all my um, paycheck on the movie, which apparently is not good. My agent tells me, but anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you like you Accident Man. That was very personal to me, though, those two movies, and I'm hoping to do a, a third one um, very oh, yeah, soon. Yeah, I can't wait. Cynthia Rothrock had this movie called Black Creek. It's getting ready to come out. Yeah. And he put all these action stars in there. Yeah. And um, and I told Cynthia, I said, Cynthia, I'll only do it because I was interviewing her. I said, I only want to do one scene. It's a cameo scene. I just want to be in one scene with Richard Norton. I started my career with him. I want to end with him. I want to maybe bump into him. And then that's how that's it. That's all I'll do. I said, I'll come film that. Later, she said, everybody, Keith has agreed to fight Benny Akitas in the scene in the movie. And I went, where did that come from? I didn't even know about it. So anyway, yeah. Mike Muller put it together. Benny and I trained and we rehearsed a lot together, which was so fun. It was 2.30 in the morning. We did a couple of nights. It was in the Arizona and the desert. The wind's blowing. It's so hard, cold. The crew's in Arctic jackets. You think they're in, you know, in wherever. It's just freezing in Alaska. So Benny and I are there. We're in a, it's a Western. So we have cowboy boots on and cowboy attire. We're outside and, and I'm supposed to start the sequence off and hit Benny with a front kick. In the sand, he's supposed to shuffle back and we continue our fight. Well, I got too geared up and I hit Benny so hard, he flipped backwards, lands on his back. And they go, cut, cut. I said, Benny, you okay? And he goes, no problem. He always said, no problem. He's fine. He's so tough. Yeah. I said, Benny, the next set of fight sequences, you got to hit me with a spinning back kick, and you're supposed to knock me back too. I said, just hit me. Just the, go the ahead. Benny the Jet Benny spinning me, back kick. He hits me so Probably hard. Probably the best when back flew, kick on the planet Earth. Right. His back kick is so legendary. I, I fly back. I land. And I, my hip was hurt, but I landed... It's 30 degrees outside. I'm in pain. I went, this is one of the best moments of my life. I'm the happiest I've ever been. It's a, because I was having flashbacks to my youth when I was doing all these films. My wife was offset. I'm looking here and going, it doesn't get better than this to come back and have one more experience to do this one more time with being you, Keith, as my friend. It was heaven. It was just one of Did the best Did you enjoy it then, Keith, getting back in the saddle and, and, and doing another fight scene after a bit of time, presumably? <laughs> Yeah, I did. It was it was one of the best fights. It was just it was so good because Keith Cook and the Richard Norton's and everybody they would gather around to yeah. see us fight like we're old timers and they wanted to yeah. see like old history or something. And Mike Moeller, I think he was in tears the whole time he was shooting it. He just kept on oh, hugging yeah. us, going, "This is the best experience of my life," because he, he just grew up with us. And now yeah, I know Mike. I know Mike. With. He's a great yeah. guy and a fabulous martial artist, choreographer, and man, he's one of the best kickers you, you'll ever see. Yeah, he, he's such a nice guy, and he couldn't have been more kind and supportive. And he just kept on thanking me. I said, "No, no, I mean," it, but yeah, it was it was fun. It was enjoyable. And do you have any fond memories of of um, super fights? That end fight, anything interesting happened there? Yeah, I I, I actually loved it because I can't believe some of the techniques that Tony Leung he choreographed that as well. He did a lot of, I could pick my knee up and I do my knees like some kind of, I don't know, it's some funky stuff. But for some reason, that's some of people's favorite technique. And I enjoyed that so much, being the bad guy, because it's fun being the bad guy. The bad guy wins most of the fight until the very end. But yeah. it was cool. He has the best well. lines and all the fun. Oh, it, it is. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. It was, get this. I was thinking about, I had a flashback when you were working with J.J. Perry. He was asking to do all these phenomenal things for like Undisputed. And I was going, if they asked me to do that, Tony Lang said, Leon goes, Keith, our first fight scene is seven o'clock in the morning. One, it was seven days for the, one of the, the in fight scene. He says, you have to do a triple kick and you have to kick the bad, you have to kick uh, Brandon Gaines and Kelly Gallant and the mother. There's four people. I have to do all these kicks. And I went, only two words came out of my mouth, wire or double. Which one do you want first? <laughs> <laughs> pick pick a lane. I don't care. He goes, we'll go with wire. <laughs> well, Keith, I've, honestly, you've, you've inspired me. So I, I want to thank you. 
And thanks for doing a, a good podcast as well and keeping the martial arts well, alive and the martial arts movies and talking about it. We're all doing the same sort of thing. Yeah, I appreciate it, mate. It's the greatest honor so far. Thank you so much.